Christopher Columbus, as we were taught in school, is often credited with being the first European to set foot on American soil in 1492. However, the historically accurate version of the events surrounding the discovery of the Americas debunks this myth. Columbus, an Italian explorer, was, in fact, seeking a westward passage from Europe to the Far East on behalf of Spanish royalty, who were eager to establish a new trade route after the Silk Road became perilous due to Ottoman Turkish control. Columbus's journey commenced in August 1492 when he set sail from Spain, ultimately reaching the Caribbean in October of the same year. He initially assumed he had landed on islands off Asia but had, in fact, discovered the Bahamas. Columbus encountered indigenous inhabitants, some of whom he took as prisoners to reveal sources of gold. His actions raise ethical concerns as he planned to take these individuals to Spain and believed they could be easily converted to Christianity. He continued to explore various Caribbean islands, taking more prisoners. Although Columbus made three more expeditions to the Americas, it's important to note that he did not discover the entirety of the American continent. It is now widely acknowledged that the Viking Leif Erikson, around 500 years before Columbus, set foot on North America, specifically what we know today as Canada. Erikson's journey is recorded in Norse sagas, dispelling the notion that Columbus was the first European to discover the Americas. Whether Leif Erikson's arrival in Finland was accidental or intentional, it marked a significant Viking expedition to North America. The Vikings named the area Helland, which translates to Stone Slab Land, possibly modern-day Baffin Island. They ventured further south, likely reaching what we know as Newfoundland, where they established a camp and prepared for winter. The Norsemen were impressed by the region's resources, including grapes, inspiring the name Vinland. Historical references to Vinland include Adam of Bremen's account in 1075 and the Book of the Icelanders, compiled by Ari the Wise between 1122 and 1133. Unlike Columbus, Ericsson didn't embark on multiple trips to Vinland. Instead, he spent one winter there and then returned to Greenland. After inheriting leadership of the Greenland settlement upon his father's death, he never journeyed to Vinland again. However, other Norsemen made visits to Vinland over a decade, though they didn't establish permanent settlements. Conflict with indigenous peoples, including an incident resulting in the death of Thorwald, Ericsson's brother, may have deterred organized settlement. The Norsemen referred to the indigenous people as scraling or wretches. While much of the story comes from Norse sagas written centuries after the events, archaeological evidence, such as the Al Ants Ox Meadows site in Newfoundland, supports the Viking presence in Canada, predating Columbus by about 500 years. This evidence confirms that Columbus was not the first European to reach North America, although he did lay the groundwork for European colonization. Although we have more detailed historical information about Columbus, Erikson's earlier voyage to North America is a significant chapter in the continent's history. He might have ventured to Iceland, and subsequently, Columbus continued his explorations throughout Europe in the following years. His journey ultimately led him to the Portuguese capital of Lisbon in 1477. Some accounts suggest that he arrived there after facing a shipwreck due to a pirate attack off the coast of Portugal. During his time in Lisbon, Columbus seized the opportunity to delve into astronomy, mathematics, navigation, and mapmaking crucial skills for any aspiring explorer. It appeared that the idea of pursuing such a path was already brewing in his mind. The age-old Silk Road presented challenges that could be circumvented by maritime travel. Columbus contemplated the idea of finding a route that involved crossing the Atlantic to reach Asia. Equipped with the geographical knowledge of his time, he was convinced of the feasibility of this venture. Like many other Europeans of his era, he was unaware that the continent of America obstructed a westward passage to China. To test his theory that the Orient could be accessed by sailing across the Atlantic, Columbus required financial backing. In 1485, he approached King John I of Portugal, but the king's advisors found his proposal impractical. 
Columbus made a second attempt in 1488, only to be rejected again. Shortly thereafter, the Portuguese explorer Bartolomeu Dias successfully sailed around the Cape of Good Hope, opening a new potential route to the Far East. This led King John to lose interest in Columbus's Atlantic scheme. Columbus persisted in his search for funding despite numerous rejections. He turned to Spain, where Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand held sway over various regions of the country. In fact, he had initially approached them as early as 1486, and they did not discourage him then, providing him with a financial allowance. Encouraged by this, Columbus continued to present his proposal to the royal couple. In January 1492, he finally succeeded in securing their support. Eventually, Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand agreed to fund Columbus's expedition and the contract, known as the Capitulations of Santa Fe, essentially granted him what he desired. The agreement stipulated that if Columbus's exploratory voyage proved successful, he would be appointed as the governor of any newly discovered territories. Additionally, he would be entitled to 10% of all income generated for the Spanish crown from those lands. The rest, as they say, is history. Columbus embarked on four voyages across the Atlantic. During his third journey in May 1498, he explored the Caribbean and ventured to the South American mainland. In 1502, the explorer set off on his fourth and final journey, reaching what is now Panama. Upon his return to Spain, he began to suffer from deteriorating health. Columbus, the man who unveiled the Americas, passed away in 1506 at the presumed age of approximately 55. Thanks for watching. Never forget to like, comment, and share the video. Never forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for regular updates.